Hello, greetings to the Ohio Anna Book Festival. I'm so pleased to share some of my work. I'm Paula J. Lambert from Columbus, Ohio, and I'll be sharing a sample of poems from my book, How to See the World. This is what it looks like. Um, this came out in September of 2020 from Bottom Dog Press. Bottom Dog is up in Sandusky, Ohio. I started writing the poems on, in uh, March of last year, wrote through the spring into the early summer, finished the book um, in late June, I believe, sent it to Larry early July. And he said, yeah, I think people need to, need to hear these poems, Paula. So we worked really hard on it through the summer, and it was published in September. There are four poems called How to See the World in the book, um, Hunger, Thirst, Fire, and Breath. Those correspond to the roughly to the four elements of earth, water, fire, and air. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to read two of those and, and two others. The first one will be breath. The early poems in the book are about springtime and blossoms and blooming. There's a crocus poem and hyacinth, um, magnolia trees and blossoms. Th that the pandemic broke out in this part of the world in the early spring was for me something that was comforting in the midst of all that was so frightening you know really terrifying so full of grief so full of grief so full of grief um but spring is a time of renewal and rebirth it is a comforting time of year, and there's a lot there to take solace in and to, to find hope in. So that's what the early part of the book is about. And then, of course, it moves on into what we were all dealing with as we moved further along. This lasted longer. Things started happening across Ohio, across the country, across the world. Um, but I'm just going to start with breath. It's a short poem. Breath. <laughs> This is how the world has always lived, lonely and afraid, each wave of terrible news, an intake of breath, sharp, a steel-bright sword to our side. The long, slow, angry exhale prepares us for what bitter thing comes next, sunrise, laughter, rain. Crocus, wise and delicate, bloom through death again and again. We can be that bursting. This is how the earth has always lived. This is what it is. Earth cracks open, we reach for light. Darkness comes, we reach for light once more. That's breath. The next one is how to see the world hunger. When I first moved from Massachusetts to Indiana, I didn't know how to see the flat black fields stretching all around me as anything but oceans of mud. It took time to understand the lay of that land, its change of season, and that newly turned soil as black as that held every promise of richness, newness, nourishment, food. I began to see it wasn't quite flat, that not all the soil was so dark, that every rise or mounding, every possible shade of brown was a different kind of soil, meant for a different kind of planting. But while it was still new to me, when I felt the first pangs of homesick, a wanting that has never left, I sat down on the edge of one of those fields next to the man I knew by now I was destined to marry. Still blessedly ignorant, I was destined, too, to divorce him, and gestured hopelessly across the landscape. There's nothing to see here, nothing to look at. The bleakness of what stretched around us matched only the bleakness of what was inside. To his credit, he didn't lash out or take my observation as insult. He said one of the few things I ever thought wise or helpful. I've been to the mountains, he said, and I also thought there was nothing to see. Those mountains were always in the way. The next poem is How to See the World Thirst. 
And this takes place, the, the, the little story of the poem takes place in Mississippi. We were living there in the, at the time in Mississippi. It's true that opposites attract, but also true that things can just clash. Like two puzzle pieces that look like they should fit, but don't. They can't be forced. You've tried this, I know. Once I married a farmer. That's not what he was when I met him, but it's where we ended up. It's where he ended up and where I did, tied like a mule to that plow. One night, we worked the field long past time to go in. We worked most nights that way, but that night, in the morbid heat, would not brought enough potable water. Potable, drinkable. God knows we had a full tank of what would save the tender plants twisting away from the brutal sun. It's hard to say when we realized our own supply would not be enough. Hard to explain how thirst turned suddenly to something it had never been before. Deadly. I saw for the first time he was sorry. And for the first time in a long time, I could set my anger aside. All that mattered was staying alive. Truck too far away. Truck too far away to get us home to the trailer. Fields too far from the road for anyone to see us if we passed out. So we took turns with tiny sips of what we had left in the single shared thermos. We wet our tongues and traded, wet our tongues and traded again, until something rose up inside me and I gulped it all down. If someone was going to die, it wasn't going to be me. How many times have I fought for my own life? Just that once? When he saw what I'd done, he nodded and looked pleased, turned back to the tanker and finished the job himself. We didn't die that day. Sun went down and we got home safely. We never stayed so late again, but I can't say that was the lesson learned. It was an open door, that desperate craving, that honestly dying of thirst. It's how it is sometimes, how it is more often than not. There's a will to live and a will to let live. They need not be in opposition. And I want to close with a poem called um, Flower Moon. I can find it. <laughs> I had it marked a minute ago. Flower Moon. This is my favorite poem to read from the book. Um, I think it's one of my favorite things I've written, really. But if we pay attention, the, the universe sort of provides us all these really beautiful things and beautiful moments to take comfort in. And that's what I was trying to, to capture here, to keep myself mindful of these things. In them, It's been a difficult year. There are moments here. There are just just our moments that are, are beautiful. So this describes one of those. Flower moon. Headed to bed late again. How it is I lose track of time when the house goes dark is something I can't explain. I slip past my sleeping husband and into the bath, startled to see a light left on where we've never seen light before. The sink, it turns out, the perfect round, chipped porcelain sink, had captured the moonlight so it glowed. Spielberg-esque, I decided, stepping back to see that the moon, high and round and perfect itself, was shining straight down into the basin, and she was shining straight back up. Tell me there are no miracles. Tell me moonlight can't speak. That something as simple as this sink can't sing a fine aria to what I saw so clearly in that moment had inspired her very existence. Tell me the world doesn't glow with miracles. I'll tell you this. Last night was not my first trip to Nirvana. Still, I was reluctant to be there again. But that tunnel of light streaming through the bath once I saw it for what it was, changed, charged the air so that even as I returned to the fully dark bedroom, the air itself shimmered with a light so beautiful it woke my husband, who reached out, thinking it was me. He rose up, 
placed his open mouth on a hip bone I didn't know still rose through this flesh. I'm not the girl I was once when, lying flat, my belly formed a basin of its own, waiting to be filled. Light begets light and recognizes love, which rises too to meet it. Anything we've ever named is nameless. Each charged particle knows itself only as part of every other one. That's what light is and love, energy, life force, holy existence, meta, matter, atman, yeah, baby, ma, me, you, the moon in that sink. How love gives way to making love, whether it should, is mystery itself. But my husband slept beside me while I remembered stories of monks walking at night under the moon, circling a field, saying prayers for us all. It makes sense now that monks and mystics retreat, cave, convent, desert, abbey. This is a painful place. Sanguine grace, blood of the sword, knowledge of all that was not, is not necessary. One need not suffer to see the moon, to know it shines on every body of water, empty, full, waiting, Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Remember that you are dust, we're told, and so we are. To dust you shall return, it's true. This is a sacred promise. Soil and stardust are both the same. They saw each other last night, sang a song that woke the man in my bed. And who is he but every man who's ever broken my heart? Who am I but one who knows how to heal? Him, you, me? Who am I but the moon and the basin? The one who sees, the one who sings back. <laughs> That's Flower Moon, and the book is How to See the World.